Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of DABCC TV. As always, I'm excited about this episode, as today we have a uh, old favorite to DABCC, a gentleman named Alex Bachman, who's the CEO and founder of vKernel, and vKernel makes some really really neat software, some virtual appliances for your VMware environments, and they have a solution that we've shown off on DABCC TV and uh, DABCC radio before, but they just came out with a brand new version, which is even better than ever. So I thought it would be smart to bring Alex on the show and bring us up to date with what's new. So uh, thank you so much, Alex, for taking the time to be with us. Uh, and I'm excited. Well, thank you. So w what do we have here? All right, so let me dive right in. So uh, we uh, released uh, Capacity Analyzer 3.0. Uh, the, uh, there are lots of new features and lots of uh, UI improvements, but the, the really big stuff is that um, now you can see bottlenecks not only at the, at the cluster level, resource pool level, server level, but you can see bottlenecks in VMs themselves, right? So even in a small environment, you know, when you, if you have 50, 60, 80 uh, VMs, I mean, it's incredibly time-consuming to analyze each VM and to see if you're running into any bottlenecks. So let me show you how it works. Cool. So what we're looking at is the uh, 3.0 uh, screen, and what we're looking at right now are current capacity bottlenecks. These are the problems that I'm having in my environment right now. And as you can see in this uh, in this table, we really, we color coded it so it makes it really easy for a VMware admin to see exactly where they're having problems right now. So um, red clearly an issue. So anything red and yellow we bubble up to the top so that you can find it pretty quickly. So I could see, for example, that uh, my vKernel CB um, VM is okay CPU-wise, but I am really pushing it on the memory side. I'm 98% uh, uh, utilized, so possible problem. Uh, as you can see, uh, by showing all core four resources uh, status, as well as I.O. status and bus resets, etc., in one screen, you can see how your VM is doing across all resources. So it makes it really easy for me to find which VMs are currently experiencing capacity bottlenecks and you know having performance issues. Very easy. I can sort on any column if I want to see which ones are the most memory constrained. I can go sort it by that. I can go sort it by CPU constraint. Um, I can sort it by uh, uh, to see which ones are the most storage constrained and so on. So, so, Doug, right here is I, I can see that, uh, you know, here are in the first column all my virtual objects where the bottlenecks are located, right? So I could see that here's uh, first VM where I'm having a memory bottleneck. In the next VM, I'm having, uh, I'm also having a memory bottleneck, just not as severe, not, not a severe. It's a 66% utilization. I can also see that uh, these VMs are beginning to clog, clog up my uh, disk I.O. channel. So... Anyway, in one place, you walk in in the morning, and you don't have to uh, wander around and figure out what are the current performance issues. You can just fire this up. Uh, we take the data out of virtual center, run it through a lot of filters, a lot of algorithms, and essentially boil it down to here are the issues, current capacity problems that you have in your environment today. Then. Uh, once I solve my current problems, I'm ready to tackle future problems. So very similar idea here, Doug. In the first column, we list out all VMs, clusters, hosts, resource pools, where the problem is going to happen. In the second column, we tell you what type of a problem is it. You know, are you going to be storage constrained, I.O. constrained, CPU constrained? And then we tell you exactly in how many days this problem will happen, which you know, gives VMware admin the time that they need to go resolve the problem. So, for example, I could see that um, with uh, this particular VM, VMKFS1, I'm going to be storage constrained in seven days. So um, I know exactly how much time I have to, uh, to react to the problem. Now, if I don't want to sit there and, and um, interactively monitor this, 
basically what I can do and let's, uh, is I can basically um, select a particular node in my environment, whether it's a resource pool, host, cluster, doesn't really matter. I select the object that I want to monitor, and I can go in and add an alert. And this is a very different type of an alert that you find in a traditional monitoring product. The cool thing here is that I'm monitoring capacity trends, not individual thresholds, which create a lot of false positives. But this is really getting down into the capacity trends. So for example, I know that in this, uh, in this cluster, I am CPU constrained. So I can go in and I could say, all right, I want to set up um, an alert to watch for future problems particularly with memory utilization, and I'm going to set a condition that says if my memory utilization starts averaging 80%, I want to know when that happens 10 days before it actually happens. Very cool. Right? So it's not the, you know, reactive alerting that everybody, you know, knows about in, in monitoring tools. This is where we're really leveraging our predictive analytics to be able to say, we're going to give you notification 10 days before you start consistently chewing up 80% uh, of memory in that particular host uh, or cluster or resource pool. So uh, this kind of alerting is just really cool and, and gives administrators the time to, to solve problems. And another thing I wanted to show you is um, capacity availability map. Um, as you know, uh, when you're deploying VMs, the first question you've got to you know, answer is, where do I have capacity? Um, and if you start with virtual center, you start you know, going through the graphs, trying to figure out, do I have enough memory here? Do I have enough CPU there? Do I have enough storage there? I mean, it's a cumbersome, time-consuming, kind of error-prone process. Well, instead of doing that, basically you just come to the capacity availability map which shows you all host clusters and resource pools, shows you how many VMs are running in each, and more importantly, how many more VMs you can fit. Okay. Right? So I could see that in this host, I can, just, I can fit four more VMs safely. Right? And then it also shows you what is the constraining resource. So if you wanted to fit more, why can't you fit more? This is telling me that for this particular, for this particular host, CPU is my constraint. In this resource pool, critical resource pool, memory is the constraint. So in one snapshot, one table, I can see exactly, you know, how many more VMs I can fit into each one. Very cool. Very cool. What's the calculated VM size? I think that's new in this version, is it? It is, yeah. It's, um, so the calculated VM size is we do an analysis within every resource boundary within each object. So in, in, say you, pick on a, you click on a particular resource pool. We analyze all VMs in that resource pool, and we figure out what is a typical footprint of a VM in that resource pool in terms of memory, CPU, storage, etc. And then uh, that's what the uh, calculated VM size is. And then when we model how many more VMs you can fit, that's essentially the, the sizing that we apply to the available resources to see which resource are we going to run out of first. Makes sense. Makes right? Sense. And there's an ability there under settings to go in and override this parameter so that you can, you know, if you want to say, hey, I want to model VMs that look like this, uh, you know, two megs of memory, uh, um, you know, 1.5 uh, 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 gigahertz of CPU. I mean, in other words, you can lay out your own VM footprint and then recalculate and see how many more you can fit. Makes sense. Very cool. Right. Um, so a um, couple of other things. Um, another really cool thing is uh, top consumers. So, you know, right now you can just go into your environment and whether it's memory, uh, CPU, uh, CPU uh, ready, I.O. weight, top disk reads and writes, you can figure out if who is my top consumer, who is hogging the resources, any of the core four resources, plus disk I.O., plus, um, um, uh, plus um, um, uh, disk you know, reads and writes, etc. So 
with this, you can very quickly narrow in on which VMs are hogging my resources. And so you can, there's multiple levels of, dr of uh, drill down um, available with this. So, you know, let's say, you know, right now um, on a particular, in a particular uh, cluster, you know, I feel that I am um, memory constrained, right? Very realistic scenario. So I'm going to go into the top consumers, look at memory. These are the top four VMs and how much memory they're consuming right now. And then what I can do is I can further zoom in and get a lot more information um, about that and see, you know, who's consuming how much memory. So, again, you know, really handy stuff. I mean, as you're reacting to problems and you want to see who's consuming my resources, it's a really easy way to, to get that information. Okay, is there anything else new uh, in the 3.0 release that you would like to show us? Yep, that's it. Uh, we'll uh, keep cranking away at some uh, other stuff, which will be coming in the future. Um, you know, look for some more interesting stuff. But uh, the 3.0 was a major, major step forward, um, and, uh, you know, we're getting a ton of downloads, and, you know, I want to... I want to offer uh, uh, the ability for your uh, uh, listeners to, uh, to download Capacity Analyzer from our site, uh, www.vkernel.com. Uh, it's a fully functional uh, trial, so people can just uh, click away. And, and uh, it's a virtual appliance, so they can deploy it very quickly and, and see this functionality in their environment in, in minutes as opposed to, you know, kind of traditional... Uh, bloatware systems management that takes days to figure out. Perfect, perfect. And as I always like to say, you guys use the OVF format. We do. Uh, uh, which is really nice because we can just download download it directly into Virtual Center and away we go. We don't have to convert or copy or anything. It just, boom, and it's exactly. in there. We uh, boot it up, we're up and running, and uh, it takes shorter time to to configure it than it does to download it, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just type in the URL, hit enter. It's, I mean, OVF is a beauty. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Alex, well, you know, as always, thank you so much for stopping by the show, and, and uh, I look forward to having you back on and talk about even more amazing stuff you guys over at vKernel are creating. So thanks again. Thanks, Doug.